Hello, chess fam. It's me, National Master Jesse James. It's time for another installment of How to Sack Your Queen. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at a very nice game with Lev Albert on the black side of a Banco Gambit. All right, let's take a look. Remember, when you sacrifice your, king, uh, your queen this time, look for the peace activity. Here we go. D4, knight f6, pawn c4, c5. Looks like it's going to be a modern Bayoni. Pawn d5, and here we go. B5, the Banco Gambit has begun. Uh, C takes on B5, A6, uh, pawn takes on A6. I will say I don't think this is the best way to play against the Banco Gambit, but hey, uh, 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 we could look at, at this another day. Uh, pawn G6 gets played, knight to C3. Bishop takes on A6, a very nice idea in these Banco Gambits. Now it's kind of hard for white to ever move the E pawn because, well, then they're going to lose the right to castle. And with the sacrifice of the pawn, well, it's good to get as much compensation as possible. All right, knight F3 got played. Pawn to d6, g3, a nice idea here. Because we can't move the e-pawn, we're going to go ahead and feed Keto. Bishop g7, bishop g2. Knight b to d7, black's having a very good game here with his piece development. Castle's kingside. Knight to b6, you, you can see here that white, um, white is getting some pressure on the d5-pawn now. Rook to e1, now that we have moved out the way, now we're looking about playing this pawn to e4. Castle's happens, knight to d2, and here, well... Queen to c7 gets played. Let's keep up our development here, right? A lot of times in the Banco Gambit, black is going to be pushing over on the queen side for the attack. Okay, here we go. Rook to b1 got played. And here, black plays queen b7. A nice move putting pressure on the d5 pawn. And I'm sure white did not waste too much time saying, you know what, I don't think they're going to take on d5 here because, well, it's going to put them into a pin that will win at least the queen. With that being said, white went ahead and played pawn to b3 here. And, well, black went ahead and did it. Here he goes in place, knight f takes on d5 here. Okay, white was like, okay, all I got to do is just take back, take back. But now, well, this is that pin I was talking about. Here after something like knight c4, maybe we'll get the bishop up first. Well, then they're just going to be in this terrible pin here, and they're going to be losing their queen. And here it does give a good position here at plus one here for white. Here white went ahead and played knight f1, putting pressure on the knight. And here, well, I'm pretty sure white did not expect this. Here the knight, uh, here the knight is going to be moving, and we're going to be sacrificing our queen. Uh, here I want you to go ahead and please push pause and calculate or try to calculate the next five to six moves here. This is going to help you understand about why when you sacrifice your queen, we need to have good peace activity and how hard it can be for your opponent to actually play the correct moves. At this point, it's a very very fine line here that whenever you calculate it, it's really hard to play for white. But I want you to calculate it all the way through. This is going to help you. Remember, when you're playing your chess games, you're going to be able to see these ideas and actually play through them. Of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure that White was expecting Black to play something like e6, in which case they play knight to e3. And again, they're thinking, we'll just be winning back our pawn because, well, if the knight takes, bishop takes, well, here we go. We got the pressure over here. If d5 pawn gets pushed, bishop takes c5. And this is an easily winning position here for White. With that being said, push pause here. See how far you can calculate. Go six moves deep. All right, here we go. Hopefully you tried to push pause. Hopefully you tried to figure it out. Here, black plays the astonishing knight to c3 here with an attack on the queen. Okay, white went ahead and said, thank you. Bishop takes b7. You know, we don't have to go into too many deep lines here. I'll just go ahead and sack uh, and uh, take the exchange here. So if you take my queen, I will take your rook and I'll be up the exchange. Well, unfortunately for them, they're playing a very a strong grandmaster, Lev Albert, and Lev Albert just goes ahead and plays. Bishop takes on b7 and says, you know what? The game has begun. If you found this move, most likely you're going to be finding the rest of the line here. And here it's very hard because look, where does the queen move where it's going to be good? Ugh. Here, believe it or not, the best move was to play queen to d3 here. And Lev Albert's pretty excited here. Bishop 2e4. Now we have a nice skewer here. We're going to be winning this rook either way. The queen goes to e3. Bishop to d4. The harassment continues. At this point, the computer's already saying, you know what? This is at least an even position here. But believe it or not, I don't believe this at all. This is very hard to play for white, uh, especially if you're playing against a human. Because look, where does the queen go? Again, this is a fine line. Look at your piece activity here. Here, this is way too much here. Oof. The queen goes to h6 because, well, where else can she go? Bishop takes b1. It's time to grab a little bit of money here. And of course, the queen side's going to be falling here. Um... Here we go. Pawn to a3 gets played. Bishop to a2. Knight to d2. Rook of uh, f to b8. We're going to be winning some money over here. Back. 
Pawn to b4, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes. And not only do we win this pawn, but look at the activity over here. And look at white's pieces. This bishop is terrible. This knight uh, might be able to jump into the game later on. This rook is definitely terrible. And unfortunately for uh, white, this queen, again, there's just nothing to attack here. So the queen is actually going to get bullied here into a very, very bad position. All right, here we go. Knight f3, looking at knight g5 kind of ideas. Bishop g7, get away, get away. Queen h3, bishop e6. Queen to f1. Okay, at this point, it's pretty easy to see that black definitely has full compensation for this sacrifice. All right, here we go. Bishop c4, putting pressure on the e2 pawn. King to g2. It's really hard to find any moves here uh, for white, so I guess king g2 is just one of those moves you play. Rook a1, and you can feel the pressure that's going to be mounting really fast here. Oof. Knight to g1 got played. Rook over to b1. And king to h3. Again, you just put in Zugzwag here. What can you play in this kind of position? If you try to play something like moving the bishop to d2, well, here, ugh, there's quite a few moves you can play. I guess I might play, let's see, what are we playing here? I would do the rook takes e1. Uh, bishop has to take back. Now e2 is becoming quite weak. Uh, you can also look about playing something as simple like maybe knight to b5. And the idea is here to play bishop c3 so we can win the queen over here. But here again, you can see it's just a bind here, and the, well, the white pieces are just having a terrible time. It's something like knight to f3. Here, bishop c3 gets played. Ugh. And uh, yeah, white, white's just getting binded and grinded here, right? So back to the game. Uh, white just plays king h3, and now Lev is just going to be pushing through here very fast. Pawn to h5. Pawn to f4. Bishop e6 check. King back. Knight to d5. Oof, looking at this knight e3 checking idea. King f3. This king is trying to uh, is just trying to find a safe square for himself. Bishop c3. This rook now is just being harassed. I guess rook to d1 is the only legal move you can play with this one. Bishop to b2, and now we got the pin. And uh, well, it's going to be a pin and a win here. There really is nothing better here than bishop takes on b2, rook takes on d1, and now well, white went ahead and just did it. Bishop takes on a1 here. It's just uh, basically a resignation move right here. Rook takes on f1 check. King to e4. And rook takes on a1, and at this point, white went ahead and threw in the towel. Remember, guys, when you're doing your queen-sucking ideas, make sure that you look for the activity of your pieces. Here, if you, you're going to have to do some calculation and definitely be good at it, because whenever you sacrifice, you have to look at least, well, I would say at least four to six moves ahead in general. That's about what well, most people will not be doing. Most people calculate maybe uh, two to uh, four moves ahead. So anything above that, you're definitely going to be catching them in something that they're going to be missing. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.